Experts are saying that the real recession isn't going to hit until 2023. With that in mind, there are some vital cooking and also some shopping skills that will help you to get through the rough times ahead. Although opinions actually vary on whether we're actually in the recession or not in the recession as of this date, here's the truth. We don't think that we have seen actually the top of the rising prices or the bottom of the markets. So what are some ways that you can prepare right now for the coming months or years? So the question is, how have we fed our family of four on $240 a month for most of 2022? Here is the answer to that question. I have some ninja level <laughs> shopping and cooking secrets that I'm going to share with you in this video. And that's exactly how we've done it. You know, in case you don't know us, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. So let's get right into ways that you can shop and cook. They're going to take your food dollar and stretch it and make it go even farther. Ninja level trick number one. That is to make sure that you are using the sale flyers, but using them properly. Now we are told by a lot of people, of course I look at the sale flyers before I go to the grocery store. Maybe you grab one on your way into the store. You ever done that? Yeah, we've done that. Mm -hmm. Stop by the grocery store. You're like, hmm, I wonder what's on sale. Here's the deal. You should know that before you ever walk out the door. All of this information is available online in this day and age for all of the major grocery store chains. And it's helpful not only to look at it, but I'm going to teach you in just a short couple of minutes exactly how you should be looking at it and how that's going to help you to stretch your food dollar. So how is this a ninja shopping skill? It's a ninja shopping skill because it goes the extra mile and goes a layer deeper. Here's what it looks like. So here is a screenshot of the most recent ad from our Aldi. Now here's what you're looking for when you look at the front page of the sales flyer. You are looking for items which are called loss leader items. They're items which are on sale and they're a really great price. In this sale flyer, we're going to pick on that amazing squash that is available for 59 cents a pound. So speaking of that squash, here we go, butternut squash. I have four of these babies. All right. I weighed them all individual and, and then I added up their weights, 18 pounds of butternut squash. Now I'm going to show you how to take this tip and you're going to make it feed your family for the next week. This butternut squash immediately, whenever you buy something that is on sale, especially if it's a loss leader item, so you got a really great deal on something, right? You're going to look at this and instead of seeing four squash in front of me, you know what I'm seeing? I am seeing recipes running through my head. Immediately I start thinking, how can I use this squash and I can use it and make it go the farthest possible. I'm going to show you exactly what you can do with this squash. So what did Hope make with the squash? She made four very tasty recipes. Let's go over them one by one. The first is a creamy squash sauce over elbow macaroni or other pasta. The second one is spicy squash bowls. The third is a curried squash soup. And the fourth is a squash pasta sauce over spaghetti. Now here's the great part about these recipes. They make very generous sizes. So each of those four recipes will feed our family for two nights. So we're talking about making eight main dish recipes out of these four butternut squash. So what that means is that $10.62 is providing the base for those meals. Now, is there more cost to those meals? Of course there is, because we're going to, you know, add more to the butternut squash to make the recipes. But what happens when you actually shop this way and when you use those sale flyers in this way, it means that your average cost per recipe is going to automatically be lower than it would have if you've not been shopping this way. Therefore, your overall cost of your feeding your family is also going to drop. You know, before we move on to our next ninja shopping skill, <laughs> if you want the recipes that Hope is talking about here, well, there'll be a link to the website in the description of this video. And there'll be more than just those recipes, the four ones that we mentioned. She's got some more in there. And 
And if you want a really yummy way to eat the roasted seeds, she's got a recipe for that as well. So be sure to check that out. There'll be a link to that post on the website. It'll be in the description of this video. The skill number two is to evaluate your receipts when you return home. Now, this skill, of course, happens after you've already paid your money, you've left the grocery store and you're back home, so the money has been spent. So how in the world does this help you to lower your grocery budget? Trust me when I tell you, this is a game changer. Remember I mentioned trying to lower our grocery budget when we had all four boys at home? This is one of the things I started doing intentionally every time I got home and it worked. Let me tell you what you should be looking for. You are looking at those receipts and you're evaluating them critically. So you're looking at what you bought. Did you buy any snack foods? Did you buy any soda? Did you buy any flavored waters? Am I telling you, you should never buy those things? I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. Here's what I am saying. You should determine what percentage of your grocery budget you're actually willing to give up to those types of things. How much meat did you buy? Meat is incredible incredibly expensive right now. So maybe you've got a flaming good deal on that meat and you got a whole lot of meat on that receipt. Don't feel bad about that. That receipt is going to be comprised of a large percentage of that receipt will be meat purchases. What happens is when you start evaluating those receipts over a period of time, you begin to see patterns in your spending behavior. So over the next, let's say, month or so, if you'll take time to evaluate and compare all of those receipts, then you'll get a pretty good picture of how you're spending your grocery dollars. Here's something else you need to do with those receipts at the end of every day. Scan and upload them into Fetch. Fetch is the sponsor for this video. Guys, I am seriously in love with this free and easy to use app. I'm not kidding. I use it all the time. It is so easy and here's how it works. You take each of your receipts at the end of the day. It can be any receipt. It does not have to be a receipt from a grocery store. You're going to line it up with those little guidelines, snap a photo of it in the app, and then simply push submit. Fetch will automatically give you points for each and every receipt. Now, if you shop online, no worries. Just hit that e-receipt button and Fetch is going to scan your email and they'll find rewards for you. Best part, as soon as you have accrued 5,000 points, then you can redeem those points for gift cards. There are literally hundreds of of places that you can redeem those gift cards. I have been saving my points up for quite a while and I'm ready to redeem a lot of those points for gift cards for Christmas. All right, here's our current favorites. I'm thinking Amazon. I'm definitely thinking GameStop because I have a couple of boys who are standing in line vying for <laughs> gift cards from GameStop. And then Walmart, that would be the third one that we're thinking specifically right now. That's what we're looking at using our points for. Now, here's the best part. Remember I told you you needed at least 5,000 points. Fetch has made that so incredibly easy because they have a special code for under the median viewers. It's right down there. It is under the median. And when you upload your first receipt to Fetch, they're going to give you 5,000 points. Now, this is a limited time offer, so that code and also a special link is going to be in the description of this video. Go grab Fetch if you don't have it and don't already use it. I can't tell you how much we highly recommend it. There's a habit that Hope alluded to earlier in this video when she was talking about all the recipes that she was going to get out of the 18 pounds of squash. And it's so important that we feel that it's its own habit. Whenever you look at an ingredient, rather than looking at the price, now is the price important? Yeah, it's, it's important. And the unit price is also important, but there's something else that's actually more vitally important to you, especially when we are in an economic downturn than either the price or the unit price. And that is the number of servings in any one ingredient. That is a game changer. This is what you should be looking at. There are so many different things you can do with one squash, but that's my point. This squash is, I think, about four and a half pounds. So at 59 cents a pound, then this squash 
cost me less than $3 for this one squash, and I can make two full meals using that as the main ingredient. So the question you need to ask yourself, when you look at any ingredient, it doesn't matter what it is, is how many servings can I get out of this? How far can I stretch it? And how many hungry bellies will it fill? Another thing you need to look at is, does the ingredient require you to supplement it with some very expensive other ingredients? Now, that box of Hamburger Helper, guess what you have to add to it to complete the meal? <laughs> uh, hamburger. Hamburger. That's right. <laughs> Meat is incredibly expensive right now. So if you're just looking at the cost of that box of Hamburger Helper, which um, is about you know $1, $1.50 for that box of Hamburger Helper, then you're going, oh, this is a pretty good deal. But what are you adding to it in order to complete that meal. If those ingredients are terribly expensive, then it's maybe not the great deal that you thought it was. You know, if that makes sense to you, what Hope is talking about, then put a makes sense in the comments so that Hope can know. And also, if, if you love the idea of making a lot of servings, trying to decide how many servings you can make for your ingredients, then put that in the comments as well. Our fourth habit was our DIY, do it yourself, okay? So it's a lot cheaper when you make the meals yourself at home. Just taking the raw ingredients and creating something that normally you may have bought in boxed form or jarred form, uh, it actually does tend to be less expensive when you buy the individual ingredients and make it yourself. Now, I am aware we're all busy, right? So we always have to balance that whole idea of the amount of time it's going to take you versus actually going ahead and buying it already pre-made for you. So I totally get that. But let me give you just a really quick example. Uh, we love to make homemade tortillas. For one thing, we like them fresh, right? Hot off the grill, so to speak. And for another thing, it allows me to make things that if I don't happen to have tortillas in the house at that time, um, it saves me a trip to the grocery store trying to buy tortillas because I've really decided that I want soft shell tacos or something else like that for dinner that night. It keeps me out of the grocery store. And that's an item right now with gas, at least in our area, going mm. way up. Hey, tell us, do you see gas going up in your area too? We'd love to know because yeah. right now it's really, really going up. We are in... at four fifty a gallon right oh, here in the yeah. Midwest. So Okay, now so back to this DIY idea and not going to the grocery store to get our tortillas. Uh, my homemade tortillas, now this was before like prices of flour doubled, was costing me about four, four and a half cents per tortilla. I actually went online and I figured the cost of ingredients um, using larger bags um, of flour from like Sam's and the oil from Sam's. And right now I can still make the tortillas from scratch, seven inch tortillas for about seven cents each. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty good deal considering what one is paying for a package of 10 tortillas at the grocery store. Now, just in case you're one of the people who's been asking me, show us how to make your homemade tortillas, it's coming guys. And away from today, we're gonna drop a video that shows you my DIY tortillas. I'm gonna show you my way cool new tortilla press that I just got, I'm so excited. And I'm also gonna give you some ideas of what you can do with your homemade tortillas, ideas that maybe you haven't thought of. So that's coming up in a week from today. Now, the best way to not miss that content that's coming up <laughs> is to subscribe to our channel. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. That kind of helps the algorithms and it puts it in front of other people who also might benefit from some of the information given here. We're moving on to ninja level tip number five, but I would love to know, tell us in the comments section, what DIY version have you adopted recently? Like what recipe are you making yourself now that you didn't a couple of years ago and you're finding out it doesn't take as much time as you thought and it actually is less expensive? Know how long the food that you make will last you. Now, the best way to know this is when you open a box or a bag or a jar, simply take a marker, put the date on it and you'll be able to see that and know how long that lasts you. Now, why is this important? It's important because you know about how long you need to go before you're gonna restock. Let's just say something lasts you for four weeks and you're like, 
I really don't want to restock for six weeks. Well, then you're going to need to use that a little more sparingly in order to make it last six weeks. But you wouldn't know that if you didn't have that date written on the packaging. So you can begin to challenge yourself with, can we make this last a little bit longer? And that's how it saves you money. You know, you know, speaking of DIY, our son Daniel just made these wonderful <laughs> chocolate chip vegan cookies. Come here, Daniel. These are awesome. Wow, thank you very much. <laughs> there you go, hon. Right now, back to our list. The next tip we'd like you to consider is... Consider areas of compromise. This is where you can kind of bend around a little bit to kind of make things work. For example, consider store brand coffees, like from Aldi's or Kroger's. You know, recently our kids gifted us with mm -hmm. some of these, and they actually were really, really good. They were awesome, and it's maybe not coffee that we would have previously considered buying, but once they gave it to us, we're like, this is like really good stuff. Y'all, Aldi has some really nice flavored seasonal coffees. They do. Just saying. Oh, yeah, and you know, we love coffee. <laughs> also, you can substitute a less expensive product. And the next thing you want to do is just simply make it all go a little further. Stretching stuff, making it go just a little bit further. Really, that is what is at the heart of making your grocery budget work, especially when we are going into a time where we are entering a recession. Now, as we mentioned, these are just six tips. These are the tips for saving on groceries that we consider to kind of be the next level tips. Thus, we kept referring to them as ninja level tips. But we actually did a video with 50 ways that you can cut your grocery costs. Yes, even in the midst of a recession. And that video, if you've not caught those tips, you might find it super helpful. That video is right over there. Give it a watch next.